going on, Brew Tubers? Uh, happy Brew Brew Wednesday. I got a, I got some beer mail. Um, I'm doing this on Friday because uh, uh, I got some beer mail from my uh, Eric Ambassador Dale, um, and he sent me uh, two beers. I got a um, <clears throat> emo IPA that he sent, and also. Oh, I forgot the name. I don't have it in front of me. A Berliner West, I think he sent. He said he said to age that one and to taste the uh, the IPA right away because the hops were dying down in it. And I believe uh, from seeing the video a while ago, I should have done my research. But uh, it was a Citra uh, Amarillo, uh, Citra and Amarillo uh, hops that he used that uh, em Emiladius YouTube user Emiladius sent. Check out his page and check out uh, Arrogant Bastard Dale's page. Uh, great, great guys. So it says B5 in the cap. Maybe that's just for his uh, record keeping or whatnot. So here's the uh, IPA with Citra and Amber. Oh, it's got a really, really, really nice color. Doing my 12 ounce glass here. Oh, it smells awesome. It's right away I smell that. Uh, actually, right away I smell Amarillo more than anything when I smelled it at the bottle. Now I'm getting some of the Citra. Um, <sighs> smells great. It smells like my type of IPA. Uh, it has a great head on it, as you can see. It's probably got a, what, two-finger head on it. Really tight bubbles. It's got that nice, uh, dark, um, you know, IPA color to it. Um, what else I got? You know, it's got some nice carbonation to it. Nice fluffy head. I don't know if you guys can check that out, but it's got a nice fluffy head to it. Uh, it looks like there's going to be some good lacing on it also. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of the Citra from the nose. I believe... I just know those are the only two hops in it. Well, there's other hops, but I just don't know which ones. Oh, man. It's a great... Mm, it's a good... Mm. The carbonation is really nice. Um, obviously, the camera probably won't be able to pick it up. I got some nice uh, carbon bubbles coming off the bottom of the glass there. Man, it's making my mouth just water from the back, from the hops. The bitterness is there uh, throughout, from the from the front, uh, front of the tongue, or to the back. If you let it fall to the side of your tongue, it just, you know, the flavor just just stays there. The bitterness stays there, keeps you wanting more. Um, uh, probably has uh, Centennial um, uh, hops in here as well. I might have used those as a bittering. Yeah, I've been experimenting with a lot of hops. And, um, you know, people say to taste the hops even before they go in the boil. Uh, you know, to just taste them, just pop them in your mouth. Do that as well with the grains, you know, just like when you're about to, you know, just like when you're cooking. Uh, you know, taste things that go inside your food um, if you're a cook. But when you're brewing beer, um, also taste what is going in the beer. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, you know, you're putting the stuff in, um, you're putting the stuff in your beer. So, you know, taste the grains that are going in there. Don't be afraid to taste them. That way you can get a character of of the beer you're going to, uh, uh, on what the beer is going to, you know, the characteristics, the characteristics of the beer. Um, right away I know there's probably some uh, wheat malt in here. Um, probably uh, from how, from how dark it is, since I'm getting some raisiny, Kind of a not too much, but on the back end, probably some crystal. Maybe, maybe, maybe crystal twenty, because it's really dark. But I would guessing maybe crystal, uh, crystal sixty or something. Uh, but probably one twenty, because it's really it's really dark up top. Um. 
Yeah, it has pretty much it has my favorite hops in here. It has Amarillo, it has Citra, and um, like I said, I'm pretty sure it has Centennial in there. Centennial could be, because um, very slight, it could be maybe, or it could be a Cascade, now that I think about it. Um, because it's it's uh, it's pretty bitter, um, but I'm thinking he would have to use a, you know to get the bitterness that he did from here. He have to use a lot of cascades. So maybe he did go with the centennial because it has that lemony flavor um, on top of on, under the the grapefruit. But it's a great beer, really good beer. I'm not sure of the uh, alcohol content on it, but I'm pretty sure. Um, that it probably sticks within the, you know, the, the profile of, of, of an IPA, but it tastes like a, uh, like a pale ale, like a, a pale ale with the su super bitterness that you get almost like a, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, um, Hop Slam is a, uh, is an IPA, um, cause it has a nice gold color to it, but you get the bitterness of a Hop Slam, um, but the color of an IPA. Well, it's almost like when you taste a uh, when you taste a black IPA, like the black IPA that I made. It kind of me me messes with your head because the, a whole bunch of bitterness is there, and you're not the mat the color that you're used to. You know, doesn't really match uh, the profile, but you like it. You know, so that's what I like about it. Um, so over overall, I, th I think it's a great beer. Uh, the lacing. Sticks around for a good while, um, but I've been talking, so it's kind of dissipated off the side of the glass. I actually think I washed this glass with soap. Now that I think about it, uh, in the um, in the dishwasher, it got put in the dishwasher. So, but you can tell that it's got good lacing on it. But it's see, it goes away pretty quick. But that's be, but the glass looks clean. Yeah, that's because it got in the uh, dishwasher there. But it's got a nice fluffy head on it. I mean, the consistency, nice, nice looking, nice, great, great looking beer. I'm going to enjoy drinking that, playing some Modern Warfare. So, um, that's all I got as well. Uh, that's, all I, that's all I have, you know, for that beer. Um, the other beer that he sent, um, he said to let it age um, probably till January. Um, this is probably the first beer that I'm gonna, you know, hold true to to that fact and actually hold back on it because uh, I just really can't sell our beers because I constantly have people over and I, you know, I try to convert as many people that come to my house and when I'm out to, you know, get away from you know a lot of the commercial, uh, um, you know, ABC uh, beers. So I always try to have them taste different beers, and some of them they like. And I have them taste like, you know, have them taste, a, you know, an imperial stout. I have them taste all types of beer. Oh, what's your favorite type of beer? Oh, it's a Miller Lite, you know. So I have them taste a pale ale. Some like it, some don't. Uh, I'll have them taste a Hefeweizen. Uh, most of the time, that goes over well. Um, but you know, this I'm gonna keep that beer in the cellar there, um, in the basement, in a cold room that I have here. Um, an unfinished room down here in the basement but um, I also have a unique drying tip for uh, your hops uh, check this out alright guys here's a little trick that I'm gonna try and since uh, I have you know not that many hops uh, I'm gonna try to dry them in the dryer alright since this is all I got as far as uh, hops this year since it's first year Cascade I really don't have anything to lose, and they kind of dried out a little bit. Not dried out, but maybe I left them on there too long. I don't know what happened. Went it went away for the beach and did a water a weekend. So oh, hold on. let me set this up first. What I do is I have my handy dandy. Hopefully, you guys. Let me turn the light on for you guys. My uh, dryer came with this rack. You drive like belts on it and shoes on it so they don't get jacked up. Put a towel in there. You spread about halfway. All right. Now that I got my hops in there, I'll make sure I spread them out fairly, whatever. 
and I don't have a I don't have a, a dehyd food dehydrator or anything like that. And this can probably and that will still take too long. If this works the way I want it to, I can probably dry a lot more hops uh, in a short amount of time uh, with this dryer. If it works out, if the if the wind uh, if the the wind in there doesn't blow too hard and blow the hops around. So uh, I don't know if you read around, but if the 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 sooner the hops go from the vine and you dry them up, uh, or pelletize them in whatever case. Um, the better flavor and more aroma and whatnot that you'll be able to lock in the freshness. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. Let's put this on some type of manual dry. Um, and let me put it on probably an air fluff. And let's put it for about 20 minutes. Let's see what happens. All right. They're not moving around. So, looks like uh, I'm going to check these in about 20 minutes and let you guys know how, uh, if they're going to be done 20 minutes or if, how long it took after uh, so many cycles of 20 minutes. All right, guys. 20 minutes is done. Let's see if I can uh, turn the light on. They're looking pretty dry. Sound pretty dry. Wait a minute. There you go. See if they. Oh, they smell delicious still. But that looks like looks like they're pretty dry to me. And I did that for. Uh, I actually switched it up. Instead of doing the air fluff, I just put a time dry and I put it on uh, low heat. Uh, so time dry, low heat, and it was for 30 minutes. So uh, there you go. Got those dry. They don't. They don't smell like you know bounty sheets or anything like that. But uh, I'm gonna use these in the next uh, brew that I make and uh, let you know how they turn out. Out.